That weld is almost the width of my finger. Hi guys, Jake from JT Welder here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over five reasons why you should buy a 220 volt machine over a 110 volt machine. Now, if you're new to welding equipment and you don't know what I'm talking about, a 110 volt machine is your normal plug in North America that you would use for most of your appliances. It's, you know, on welding machines, it's gonna be a three prong because it needs that grounding prong because it uses a lot of energy. But yeah, it's just your standard normal plug. It's considered 110 or 120 voltage. So this is a 110 voltage machine. Then this is a 220 volt plug. So you can see it's about three times the size of this one and it's also three prongs. This is a similar plug to what would be on your oven or your dryer, except those would be four prong. This one's a 220, it's three prong. Uh, this is what most middle size welding machines, this is the type of plug they come, on, come with. This is pretty standard uh, and it works off, but basically every house has the output to run a welding machine of this size. So welding machines, this is a Lincoln Electric MIG Pack 140 and this is a uh, Art Captain MIG 200. So 220 volt, 110 volt. This, we're talking about mostly just MIG welders today. This is a MIG welder. This is also a MIG welder, but it also does a few other things other than just being a MIG welder, which we're gonna get into. But before I start getting into the reasons why to buy the 220 volt machine, I'm gonna do a couple test welds with both of these with flux core wire as well as MIG gas shielded wire. And we'll take a look at those welds and then we'll get into the reasons why you should probably go with the 220 volt machine. <laughs> All right, so let's look at these test welds. Okay, these first two here, this is the Lincoln Electric uh, 110 volt machine running gasless flux core wire, and this is the Arc Captain. And these are both running off the 110 volt outlet because the Arc Captain is a dual voltage machine. So as you can see here, the Lincoln did okay. It's a pretty skinny bead, uh, and it's a little bit high for how wide it is. Not you know, not ideal, but it did get the job done and it would work. Now next, that's the Art Captain plugged in the same outlet. As you can see, it's a bit of a wider weld and it's a little bit lower on the plate, which is what you want. So it already outperformed the 110 volt machine while it's plugged in through an adapter into the same outlet. So right there, like it already welds better. Now this third weld here, this is the Art Captain running gasless flux core, the exact same wire as these two, same spool of wire. Look how wide that weld is and look how nice and flat it is. That's a lot of output. That weld is almost the width of my finger. That's some really good penetration and that uh, Hobart Fab Shield 21B wire I'm running here is actually structurally rated for up to half inch thick material. Now these next two welds here, are this is the Lincoln running regular MIG wire with ga shielding gas. So you can see there's like cold lap on the edge of the weld. It's really high up. It looks like a slug just sitting on the plate. There's not much penetration at all. Uh, that's the best settings I could get. Uh, it's definitely too much wire speed, but that's the only way it would weld actually decently on uh, this thickness of plate. In regular MIG with gas, it, on quarter inch thick plate, this thing really can't, I would not accept that on anything. You would never want to weld with it on that. You could really only weld with a 110 volt welding machine with gas and regular MIG wire on like sheet metal basically to get a nice weld. Otherwise, if you're trying to do like thicker material, you're just gonna have to run a flux core wire like I used up here. And then this is the Art Captain plugged in through the adapter to the 110 volt. It's a bit better than the Lincoln Electric, but I'm not gonna lie, it's still not ideal. It's uh, still got a bit of cold lap and it's just not as good of a weld as it could be. And that brings us to the last one here. This is the Art Captain running the same MIG wire as these two, but plugged into the 220 volt outlet. And you can see that's a big, nice, wide, flat weld, super hot. Again, about the same width as the bigger flux core weld over here. 
that's on max output, max wire speed, and max voltage. So it did a pretty nice job. A little bit spattery, but you know, you can fine tune it and it probably won't spatter that bad. But that's a big, fat, hot weld. It's nice and low and that's fully acceptable and it's really nice. You can see that this, you know, that's the, the weld with the 220 volt outlet with the regular MIG wire. It's sitting nice and flat. You can see these two welds with the regular MIG wire and the 110 volt are sticking pretty high off the plate. But there's the welding test, there's the proof. 220 welds, 110 volt welds. You obviously can tell the difference. These are better than those though with the flux core wire. Okay, reason number one to go with a 220 voltage machine as your first welding machine is because it also welds on 110 power. So this machine here, 110 regular plug, this machine here, 220 plug adapter that comes with this welding machine. You plug that adapter in and now I can plug the machine in to a regular wall outlet and weld with it. And it knows, it converts its parameters inside and it knows that it's plugged into a smaller outlet and it still welds. So this can do everything this, can, this one does on the same outlet. So this actually plugs into 110 and 220. So the true term for being able to use one of these adapters is called dual voltage. And almost all of the 220 voltage machines in nowadays in 2024 and newer, they all are capable of doing this. Pretty much all of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So make sure if you are buying a 220 volt machine, you make sure that it comes with an adapter and it states that it is a dual voltage machine. So that's a huge advantage right there. That means if you don't have a large 220 volt outlet, you don't need one right away. You can buy this welding machine and plug it into your typical wall outlet just like you would this one. And this machine kind of outperforms this one when it's plugged into the same outlet. So it does the same as this. They both are capable on the same wall outlet when it comes to welding. Okay, reason number two is that multi-process machines. So what that means is this machine is a MIG welder, it's also a stick welder, and if you buy a kit for it, you can make it into a TIG welder. So it welds three different processes. So if you're buying your first welding machine, you don't know if to whether to get a TIG, a MIG, or a stick, don't worry about it. Just buy one of these or something similar to this, and you can have all three in the same machine. Oh, you can get a MIG pack 140 that is a uh, that is a multi-process machine that does TIG, stick, and MIG, but it's lower output, so it's not gonna do all of them great. These, and you're gonna have to find one that says it's multi-process. A lot of these aren't multi-process still, they're just MIG or stick welders. This, however, this R Captain comes multi-process and basically almost all 220 machines, 220 volt machines now are rated for multi-processes, so you can MIG, stick, and TIG on it. So that's a huge thing. If you're in the market, you know, it's really nice to have a machine that does all three processes and you can learn on all three of them or you can use all three of them for side jobs or doing your own custom fab work or fixing stuff at home. That's a big thing, that's a big deal. So when it comes to buying one, uh, 220 versus 110, you're far more likely to find a 220 volt machine that is a multi-process welder. Okay, reason number three to get the 220 is that the output and the performance of your welds is gonna be much better than running on a 110 volt machine. So as you can see in the test that I did, this machine does, when you're welding with flux core, it can weld a quarter inch thick steel and it does put down somewhat of a decent weld. And this one does too, when also plugged into the 110 volt outlet. But you're very limited. It's slow, it doesn't put a lot of weld down very fast, and anything thicker than a quarter inch, uh, you can still weld it. It's just gonna take a lot more passes and a lot longer, and it doesn't really put that much heat into your workpiece at that thickness. So it's definitely not the strongest welds. Now, when you're running this one on 220 volts, with flux core wire, it maxes out at 26 volts of output on the MIG gun. That's a lot of output. Running that 035 flux core wire, 
this thing absolutely eats. You can see how quick it welds very fast. It makes a nice wide and flat weld, very hot and much stronger weld than you would ever get running this or this one on 110 volts. And then when you're running actual MIG wire where it uses the gas, again, this thing with gas shielded wire can barely even weld uh, quarter inch steel. I mean, I, I would say technically it doesn't at all. Even eighth inch steel, it has a trouble welding it with gas shielded wire. This one, however, when you have it turned up all the way maxed out with gas and gas shielded wire, it does an amazing job. It's again, a really hot, wide, lower, nice penetrating weld. It, it does a really good job. You're never gonna get welds like that, especially when MIG welding with a 110 volt machine, at least not in this day and age. So if you're looking for more performance and you're looking to weld stuff other than just bodywork on a car or a little bracket here and there, I would definitely go with one of these. The only reason I would buy a 110 volt machine if I was strictly welding on body panels of a vehicle or just doing sheet metal welding. Reason number four of why to get the bigger machine is because you don't have to upgrade ever. And what I mean by that is, yes, I kind of talked about it when I was saying dual voltage. You know, if you buy one of these uh, and then eventually you want to weld thicker stuff and do more welding, you're going to have to upgrade to another size up. To go from another size up from a 220, you're looking at three phase power or 600 volt outlet basically. And you just won't have that at your house. So 220 power, this type of plug, your dryer, your oven, your, the biggest appliances in your house run off an outlet similar to what this uses. To go up a size of welder, you can get bigger welders that run on 220 that have a bit more output than this R Captain if you spend uh, quite a bit more money. But if you really wanna go up a whole nother size, you need three phase 600 volt power. And most residential houses just aren't gonna have the capability to do that. Uh, because one, a lot of houses aren't where there's three phase power, which is your power lines have three phases instead of two phases. And you're, if you just have two phase, you're gonna need a phase converter to run that big 600 volt outlet, which you're just not gonna have at your house. So you, in theory, if you buy a 220 volt machine, you're never gonna need to upgrade it because that's the biggest size machine you can plug into your grid on your house anyway. Yeah, so once you buy one of these 220 volt machines, you're set, you don't have to worry about buying another welder, you're maxed out for what you can use where you live, basically. Reason number five is that the 220 volt machines tend to have a lot more features than these smaller 110 volt. For example, this machine here has a synergic mode where it will set your settings for you, and all you have to do is adjust how hot or how much output you want. So something like this, the smaller welding machines, these are made a lot cheaper because they're only 110 volt and they're considered like the bottom barrel for welding machines, the cheapest you can get. They don't really have much of those features. This also has a light inside of where the MIG, the spool of MIG wire goes. And as I said, it's multi-process. It, you can tell it what gas you're putting in and everything for the automatic settings. It also has a uh, fine tuning knob on it it's got a lot more features basically. So when you buy these smaller, cheaper machines, they're just not gonna have those features. The bigger 220 volt machines, pretty well, depending which one you buy, they're guaranteed to, guaranteed to have a few more features than these, if not a lot more. As we can see on this Art Captain, I can select MIG mode. It's currently, that's manual settings, synergic, where it sets itself, you tell it. Uh, what size wire you're using. You can tell it what gas you're using or if you're using flux core. So, you know, MIG mix. You can also, another really cool feature about this one, you can set it, these arrows right here are trigger options. So that's spot weld where it'll just do a quick spot weld. That's just typical on off with the trigger. And then this mode means when you click the trigger on, it just continuously feeds wire and then you click it again for it to stop. So those are some really cool settings you're just not gonna get in those cheaper machines. As I mentioned, there's a light always on in here. So whenever you're changing wire or anything like that, the area is lit up, which is super nice. I've only ever seen that on really high-end welding machines. 
my take. I think in today's day and age with the technology now, I mean, back when I first started welding, the 220 volt machines were kind of out of the question because they were so expensive. But this now goes for around $500 Canadian or $370 US on Art Captain's website. I'll have a link with the discount code and in my description. But this now in days, like that's really good price. I bought this thing for $400 back in the day. And if I would have bought a knockoff one on like a Lincoln Electric, I would have been about half that, so $200. So we'll say $200 for a knockoff one of these today versus $500, we're talking Canadian dollars right now. So $500, $370 if you're American. Uh, that is, you know, it's double the price, but you're getting double the performance and you're getting double the, you're getting triple the processes at MIG, TIG, and stick welds. I just, I don't think there's any question about it. Just buy the 220 volt machine with an adapter that's dual voltage and multi-process. You can't go wrong. I don't know, that's my opinion. If anyone has any other opinions, put them in the comments, but I think the 220 volts in today's day and age are an absolute no brainer. brainer. So if you're thinking about buying a welder, completely steer clear of all of these and just stick to the dual voltage 220 machines.